All right, guys, weekly whirl 17, and as you can see, we're outside with the one kilowatt prototype behind us. Today we have <laughs> two mile an hour winds gusting to three or four mile an hour. Yeah. Yeah, not very much. Um, I forgot to ask my uncle to bring my wind meter, but I could have had my wind meter here. But um, you'll see as the wind picks up as we're talking, it begins spinning faster and then stops occasionally. Right now we do not have a generator on this and I do not have the furling mechanism hooked up <clears throat> because, you know, one step at a time. You have to build as you go. So our next step is going to be getting generator gear mounted below here and then actually working on getting power production readings. We don't really have any place to put it up way high. I mean other than lifting it up with a forklift, which could get a little bit dangerous, especially in higher winds where we end up with a, a tipping situation. But, um, you know, we'll play with that carefully as we go and see if we can start getting power production, you know, performance ratings from our one kilowatt turbine. Yeah, the uh, standing it up was a little bit scary. Uncle Raj yeah. was a little nervous. A little nervous, yeah, it was a little bit scary. But but it went very smoothly. We didn't have any problems. Um, you know, at this point, we'll figure out ways to get it up and get it down quicker and quicker and more efficiently and more safely as we go. So we're just figuring out everything as we go, one step at a time and taking it carefully. You know, safety is key. Yeah, so. Our wind stopped though. No. Yeah, of course. Of course. We'll get some footage. We'll cut footage in of when the wind might be gusting or blowing a little bit, but you know, there's just a light breeze today, and that's it. Just a very light breeze. Yeah. It's really interesting when it is spinning and the wind is blowing, you know, maybe four or five miles an hour. I'll tell you, that shaft down at the bottom is really spinning with some nice torque. And that's where your power production comes from. So we'll be experimenting with that, various gear ratios from you know, maybe a maximum of 100 RPM here in a 23, 24 mile an hour wind, moving that over to a four or a five time gear up where we're spinning our generator at 500 or 600 RPM for every 100 we're making on the main shaft. So that's how we'll have to play with different generators and see what their sweet spot is and then couple it to harmony. We have plenty of room down here to mount all kinds of generator gear. We never had that before with a little five foot tall prototype. That five foot tall prototype had zero room for me to really mount other generators. We're gonna probably do toothed pulleys and um, cog pulleys here underneath and then start working with different gear ratios and different um, generators to start getting our performance ratings and our power production readings off of the unit. Yeah. Anything anything noteworthy oh, you want to bring cool. out? It's cool to see it spinning out the wind. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, it's um really it's cool. pretty exciting to finally have it out here for the first time. Yesterday we stood it up and we just had it spinning. I'll do a little little video of it spinning in the shop. We had a fan blowing on it and it was spinning like crazy. Here we go. Yeah, when I say these harmony should start in one mile an hour wind, that's no bull. Oops, I just said a bad word on my video. It's no bull crap. It is no bull crap. It should easily start in one mile an hour wind. Out here, we wanted to get it spinning in the natural wind, but of course today the wind's not cooperating. I mean, well, we two miles an hour wind. Yeah. I think it is <laughs> what about it is. all it is. Yeah. But um, you know. We'll get better footage as the weather, of course, you know, we get storms and stuff like that. So we should have plenty of opportunity to get some really good data and performance data. I'll make sure I bring my wind meter in so that we can get that performance data. But we should be somewhere around a 23 to 24 mile an hour wind. This unit should be producing about one kilowatt of continuous power. So that's what we're hoping for and then obviously with the different furling states I want to play around with that um, it'll be interesting to see if the different furling states cause better or worse production my theory is that as the wind keeps rising faster and faster we can pull in and furl in just a little bit more and a little bit more as the um, 
the wind speed picks up and still maintain that that peak. Well, I'm hoping oh. that we get a little bit higher efficiency by being furled in rather than being 100% open. So that's the theory. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's a shame we don't have better wind today. It would be really nice to actually show this with some good wind. Yeah. Yeah, we had a little bit earlier, but it died down. It's coming a little gust right now. Yeah, little gusts here and there. It just takes right off when it gets a good gust. Yeah, there were so many people that were worried. They're like, oh, that's going to be way too much metal. You're never going to spin that thing. Guys, I don't know how many times I have to explain it. It's like people live under a rock or something. You know, seriously. Yeah. Why would you think just because it's heavy, it's not going to spin? It's a well-balanced unit. Of course it's going to spin. You know, that that weight is just going to be a flywheel effect. It's actually going to help to level out gusts and everything as the wind is going up and dropping. The weight will actually create a flywheel effect built right into the unit. So it just blows me away. Some of the armchair critics and people that yeah. sit there and try and say what's going to work. I just always tell them, you know what? You go ahead and have your opinion. I'm gonna get my hands dirty and I'm gonna build it. And that's the way I operate. It's it's clearly self-starting and, you know, one mile an hour wind. Yeah. Hardly any wind at all it takes off. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it molded up higher. It's gonna spin way better. We're on the drone here, we get no air. Yeah, there's ground effect and yep. drag from the ground yep. and everything right now. Right. We could lift it up on, on the uh, forklift, but, you know, I'm not sure I'm ready to to go crazy with that yet. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep it one step yeah. at a time. Yeah. <coughs> we'll work on the generator next. And get yeah. Some power generator and some batteries down below so we can take the generator, dump it into the batteries and start getting power performance ratings and everything like that. Yeah. yeah now right. we're getting a little gust. Yeah. A little gust. Yeah. Nice. Four miles an hour. Yeah. 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 Yeah, just imagine if it's swinging. Oh my god. god. Yeah. You, it would rip your hand off trying to, you know, stop that shaft. And that's what you want. You know, that's yeah, where your torque, torque comes from. Yeah. That's what's going to drive the generator. Yeah. And not that we have enough wind to really evaluate it, but it's, it is perfectly silent. There's zero noise from it. And even with the smaller unit and even the little tiny, the little tiny pink ones, there was no... There was no noise ever that I've ever heard coming from any of my designs. So I'm hoping that this one continues right on in that same vein and there is it's just basically silent in operation because that would fix one of the big problems with putting it in places where people are. People can't stand the noise of the ugly, nasty horizontal wind turbines that are out there. Here, if they've got something that looks like a work of art, you know, you can imagine having crazy designs silk screened on it or whatever or you know, yeah. you could do LED lighting, you could go crazy with it. <laughs> flames, yeah. have flames coming off of it, whatever. But if you have something beautiful and silent in operation, and it's not going to ever kill any birds because it's a solid mass in front of them rotating, you know, the birds aren't going to fly into it any more than they would fly into your house. There's not going to be any of the problems that are holding back um, the masses from adopting something like this, where there's so many reasons holding them back from adopting the horizontal axis wind turbine units. And everyone keeps trying to say, oh, efficiency is king, efficiency is king, or bigger is better, you know. I got a message the other day saying, how's this going to scale up? You know, will you be able to scale it up? Why does everyone want to scale something up? You know, cars can be scaled up. You could scale a car up to the size of a bus. Does that make, make it better? Is everyone going to run out and buy the big bus size car because they can? Yeah. No, it's ridiculous. Why would you scale something up bigger than what you need? There are way more things that are more important than efficiency and scalability. It is practicality. You have to be able to have something obviously reasonably efficient, but the practicality of it is king. The practicality of it is what matters way more than the other things people are trying to sit there and say on YouTube and other places. So. As long as we are reasonably efficient, I'm hoping for, you know, somewhere near the 40% efficiency range, that would be great. And it's silent in operation. You have a good return on investment, a good, um, nice, low or economic bottom line for the price to purchase the units and have them installed. These are the things that matter. These are the things that cause a paradigm shift when we can get into 
units that are now going to start popping up all over the world and people are going to start adopting it as the standard and looking back they'll be like why were we even looking at those crazy horizontal wind turbines those noisy ugly things when we could have something beautiful that's where practicality and just good old-fashioned common sense is going to win out when you have something that makes sense you don't go to the car dealership and say I want your most efficient car in this whole parking lot you bring that car to me and that's a car I'm gonna buy nobody does that they're looking for it to fit their budget they're looking for it to fit the size requirements that they need or the cargo that they need to haul there's all kinds of things that go into what they're looking for same thing with a wind turbine same thing with the wind turbine no different yeah. so that's where it's at all right guys well thank you for sticking with us thank you for believing in what we're doing and following along and this is just the beginning of what's about to get really really exciting as you can see it's now spinning behind us so hopefully next week we'll make some good headway on generator apparatus and start getting some power production ratings as quickly as possible i'm not going to promise that's going to happen next week but right. we're working as quickly as safely and efficiently as we can and that's the goal so all right all right Catch, Catch you on, on the, the next whirl. Harmony Turbines. We now have the power to change the world.